welcome back to The 1% Show. If you're new here, tune in to hear me spin the yarns with authors, savants, and eccentric humans every week. I'm your Aussie host, Brandon Nangavo, and it's time to kick back and enjoy the show. Let's go. This episode is brought to you by Blinkist, a pretty sweet app that gives you key insights from over 2,000 best-selling non-fiction books transformed into powerful packs you can read or listen to in just 15 minutes. These powerful packs are known as Blinks. Some of my favorite Blinks include super intelligence, deep work, and the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Head to Blinkist.com slash 1% better to get started. That's Blinkist, B-L-I-N-K-I-S-T, dot com slash 1% better. 1% better is all words, lowercase, no spaces. Again, head to Blinkist.com slash 1% better to access key insights from over 2,000 best-selling non-fiction books straight from your phone. Um, so without further ado, to the listeners listening in on the 1% show today, uh, we've got our guest, Crystal. Now, I'm really excited to have you on the podcast, Crystal. Uh, and basically how I found Crystal was I, I came across her channel on YouTube and she has quite a few no fat videos. And as my listeners know, listening in right now, um, you know, I'm a big, a big advocate of no fat myself. Um, and I've, I've posted a few videos on it as well. So, uh, when I when I noticed Crystal posting videos on it, especially coming from a female perspective, I thought that was really interesting and, and very brave of her to put that out there and really help women who are actually on NoFap as well. Um, many of you might know it's it's primarily dominated by males, but I, uh, I'm really interested in hearing about uh, the female perspective and how that's benefiting females. So, Crystal, uh, I just want to give you a warm welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> Fantastic. It's a pleasure. So, Crystal, just in your own words, uh, could you tell us what it is that you do on your YouTube channel and why you run it? Um, well, from the beginning, it were, was really uh, just a little bit of vlogs and what I ate today videos. But now I'm really focusing on self-improvement and uh, on simple living, a healthy lifestyle and also giving away diet tips and exercise tips. So really focusing on the self-improvement part of your, mm. yeah, of your life. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. You're doing a great thing for the world. Uh, and so mm. just on that, now this is not much to do with NoFap, but this is an open forum here. So before we launch into the NoFap stuff, uh, I'm curious. I actually saw a, uh, are you a, a vegan? I, I think I saw a lot of vegan videos. So I'm, I'm quite curious. Yes, I'm a vegan. Yeah, fantastic. So what what made you make the switch to a vegan from not vegan? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Well, uh, I remember it was a couple of years ago that I struggled so much with acne. And I've tried so many things for it, like pills, potions, creams. And nothing helped get rid of uh, of it. And eventually I came down to a point that I couldn't take it anymore, and I just started researching myself, taking control into my own hands, basically. Mm. And I researched for about three months, and every time I came out on videos and articles and blog posts about a plant-based diet, a vegan diet, and the more I looked into it, the more it clicked with me, and I just started to try it out, and... I remember after I watched also some, um, it was Earthlings a movie, a documentary, and I looked into the uh, ethical side of it. I came to the conclusion, this is what I need to do. I cannot look back anymore. I cannot go back to my old ways. Mm-hmm. But then I also saw my acne going away. So it was like a win-win situation. So I thought, okay, I'm going to be vegan for the rest of my life. I'm doing something good for the planet. And it's also benefiting me. So why mm-hmm. should I quit this? Yeah, fantastic. Two birds with one stone. So uh, before yes. we proceed, uh, Crystal... Uh, what we might just do is again to boost audio quality is switch off our video uh, if you don't mind. So all you have to do is click the yeah the little camera icon on the bottom of your screen. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So I've just turned mine off. You turned off. Yep. Yeah. All right. Brilliant. So get some great audio that way. So 
Uh, extending on that, Crystal, uh, did, were there any particular challenges you faced uh, turning vegan, especially in regards to, you know, uh, the social consequences of, of becoming a vegan and now being labeled a vegan? Did you have any issues there? Or like, you know, saying goodbye to the taste of meat and all that stuff? Did you have any challenges? Um, for food-wise, I didn't really miss anything. I wasn't craving anything of it at all. And it was basically after I saw the eth ethical side of it and the animal parts of it that I didn't really see it anymore as food. So it was really easy for me to actually quit it. Easier than I thought. Hmm. Uh, for the social aspect, um, I had some troubles, uh, first of all, with my boyfriend. He thought I was going to become a diabetic because I uh, ate way more fruit than before. <laughs> and we had like a lot of conversations about it, but he now is um, okay with it. Mm. And for my parents, uh, they first thought I was very extreme. My father even became a little bit angry about it <laughs> and mm. thought I was probably going to get sick. But eventually they saw me changing they saw i was getting more positive i was looking more healthy and they also now agree with the lifestyle i'm having mm. and for friends wise one friend he even turned vegan because of um of me mm -hmm. he said and uh yeah friends were a bit more open towards it but other than that uh, no problems actually mm. Yeah, fantastic. That's great to hear. And I'm a really curious guy, so whenever I hear something that sparks my curiosity, I will ask a question. So I'm just curious, your boyfriend said he had some concerns about, uh, you know, potentially, you know, getting diabetic and all that it is in regards <laughs> to fruit. So is, was he talking about the the high fructose content or whatever it is in, in fruit, like the high sugar content, and that could lead to diabetes? Was that what he was talking about or not? Uh, yeah, the sugar contains high amount of fruit and he was also talking about the high glycemic index and all these things. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, it was also like at first a little of a concern because I wasn't very educated on it. So it actually sparked me to do more research about it, to give him a clearer answer about it. And yeah, I now know that sugar in fruit won't cause you to be a diabetic. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Now, uh, just to give you some background, Crystal, uh, just to let you know where I'm coming from, I I consider myself vegetarian and semi-vegan. I know some some vegans don't really like that, like you're either vegan or you're not. But yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> almost full vegan, but not quite, uh, but gradually easing into it. So cool. I think I was on a podcast with someone else and they said... In regards to nutrition for vegans, there's there's one thing, one one particular nutrient that you need to keep your eye on. I don't know if it was like, I don't know whether it was iron or it might have been something else. Iodine, I think it was. He said if you don't have all your iodine, you go mentally retarded or something in a year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that was Seth Alexander, black white guy in America, the guy that does no fat uh, on, uh -huh. there on YouTube. Do you do you know anything about like iodine deficiency in regards to veganism? Uh, I don't know much about iodine. I know that probably uh, potatoes contain iodine or some type of salt, but I thought it was rather people are more concerned about B12 always. Mm, yeah, that's what I thought. B12 is the one that mm -hmm. comes up quite a lot. Um, yeah. But maybe it's worthy of some exploration into the, the iodine thing, only because you said, oh, you might go retarded if you don't get your iodine. But <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> well, I, I'd have to look into it further, but I just thought if you... Yeah. Yeah, see if you knew much about it. So, okay, cool. Um, just while we're on the topic of veganism, it's a really interesting subject that's you know, sparked a lot of hype in the past few years. Um have you seen no i want to ask uh, earthlings now i haven't actually seen it yet i have seen the documentaries uh cowspiracy and i have seen uh what the health which is by the same producer um so i'm wondering what were your biggest takeaways from the earthlings documentary um well for me the the biggest thing was that i had to sit down and watch the full thing and um like in one go because I use I um I remember I have seen some clips about how chicks would be ground up and these things you sometimes see passing through a Facebook feed. But me needing to sit 
and watch from beginning to end, it was just a whole shock for me that how, um, yeah, how everything goes on behind the scenes in the animal agriculture, but also even with animal testing and how pet shelters treat their animals if there are too many animals, how they dispose of them, basically. it uh, The whole thing from beginning to end was just a huge shocker for me. Mm -hmm, sure. And are you a believer that uh, animals and humans, that uh, we're all sentient beings and we should all be treated equally? Uh, I believe to a certain extent, we because we all feel love, pain, and we also suffer and... Uh, we want to live so to that extent. I think we are very much the same, but I do think that uh, It's not that humans are so much superior, but there is a difference between animals and humans Okay, and are you able to pinpoint what that difference is? Do you think it's in terms of like how conscious we are as living beings or the fact that we, we can do mathematical calculations whereas animals can't or is there anything you can pinpoint? Yeah, of course, uh, we are more, uh, because of our technology, we are advanced in that uh, area. Mm -hmm. But I don't dare to say uh, for sure, but it, it looks, it feels like, or it looks like we are uh, more conscious to a certain extent as well. But I don't dare to say that 100% because I, I've never been an animal, <laughs> yeah. so I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I, I really like that comment, actually. I've never been an animal, so I don't know. <laughs> unless, we, unless we have and we get all philosophical here and we go into, like, uh, reincarnation and maybe in our past lives we were animals or, or things like that. But, I mean, that's a, that's a whole other podcast. Um, and we really get into that <laughs> yeah. sort of stuff with some of my other guests, my buddy Wolf. We've got into that. It's really that's interesting. Cool. But, anyway, um, <laughs> we'll uh, try to keep things on track here and... Um, I think, is, is there anything else you want to say in regards to that? Otherwise, we'll move on to NoFap, which will be our primary discussion point. Um, no, that was it. <laughs> okay, fantastic. So, moving in uh, on to NoFap now, this is where I, I, my curiosity has really sparked a lot because I know it's made a huge impact on my life and the lives of thousands of others. So, let's get into it. Um, so, Crystal, my question is, I'm wondering what the current vibe is regarding women and nofap. So I'm wondering, is 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 nofap as much of a, a a problem or masturbation and watching porn? Is that as much of an an issue as it is for men? Just just like the same for women. Um, I could only speak for the people I I know right now because I have uh, one friend and a couple of girls reaching out to me that they had. Uh, struggled with it a lot and thanks to my videos because n no girls really uh, talk about it out in the open mm. so uh, I only know from a, a handful of girls that they have struggled with it and I don't know if for the rest of the girls it is a problem or not because yeah we we don't speak about it I don't even speak about it with uh, uh, like girlfriends that I have mm -hmm. only except one uh, girl mm -hmm. So it's really hard for me to tell, but I only know for myself and then the, the girls around me that I have spoken about it, that it was actually a big, bigger issue than we thought at first. Mm, mm, sure thing. You know, with men, we, we joke about it a lot. You know, we're, we seem to be quite open about masturbation and porn and we always joke around with our friends mm -hmm. about it and all that. Uh, whereas with women, yeah, typically they, they tend to be more reserved in that regard. So uh, that, that's just generally speaking. I'm sure it's different for everyone. But uh, I, I'm wondering, do you know why uh, women are hesitant to speak about it uh, compared to, to men? Do you have any, uh, any idea? Well, I think when women speak about uh, sexual topics or about pornography, um, it is so uncommon or unusual, and men will find that... Um, uh, we'll take it the wrong way, I guess. And I, I saw that a lot with my video that got a lot of views, one of my most popular videos, that the comment section is really uh, a lot of f making fun and making jokes. So nobody's really taking it so seriously. Mm. 
And when I see uh, men talking about it, the comment section isn't going that crazy, mm. I, I, th I think. So when I also a friend of mine, a girl who does NoFap as well, she also get a lot of these uh, joking comments about it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's maybe yes. Yeah, sorry, go sorry. On. Yeah, it's maybe the way because women don't uh, speak up about it at all, so it's really strange. Mm, sure thing. And do these comments typically come from men or women, or aren't you sure? Um, mostly men. Hmm. Mm, okay. Yeah. It, I mean, it certainly is something to to take seriously. No question. Whether you're a man or woman, and I'm I'm just wondering. Uh, for those who just happen to not know what NoFap is and don't really follow my stuff, basically it's abstaining from porn, masturbation, and or sex. So it depends what level you want to take it to, but those are the three primary things that you can choose to abstain from. So uh, for you, Crystal, was it porn, was it masturbation, or was it orgasm altogether? Was it all three or just one of them? Uh, all together. All together. Mm -hmm. All together, sure. And is that now a, a lifestyle thing? I noticed you posted a video, you've stopped counting. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. So it's now a lifestyle for me. I think this will be part of me for the rest of my life. That's, I will say this in this moment. <laughs> mm, sure thing. So I'm curious, Crystal, um, since you've abstained from all three, which is a lot of men <laughs> are, are very hesitant to... Uh, not abstain from that last one because, you know, men mm -hmm. typically, typically, not everyone, but typically seem to have a, a very high uh, sex drive and, and sexual mm -hmm. prowess. So I'm curious, I don't know if you've heard of the Caressa method, but it's, it's basically where you can still have sex, but you just don't uh, orgasm with your partner. So I'm curious, is that something you're interested in or do you want to abstain from it altogether? Well, that's something I am interested in. I haven't looked into it, but I've had uh, people comment about it and um, share some information about it and it has gotten me very interested so I will look into that mm, yeah I mean I gotta do so myself actually but yeah okay sure that's that's really interesting so you're basically on hard mode for the rest of your life uh, that's super and I mean as long as it's benefiting you that that's freaking awesome uh, you know mm -hmm. toasts to you that's awesome so how did you <laughs> actually come across uh, NoFap in the first place um, I remember that because I really love YouTube and I always was uh, scrolling to YouTube videos and I uh, sometimes saw some videos pop up about NoFap and I had no idea what it was. And until I saw uh, one of my favorite YouTubers back then, he was talking about it, but kind of in a negative way. But I didn't take his word for it. I just found it to be pretty cool that guys were abstaining from masturbation and from porn for a while because I did see some um, beneficial results coming from that. I, I would see the positive side from it. And I still haven't watched a real NoFap video uh, after that. But somewhere around the beginning of this year, my friend, she's, uh, she's called Jana, she started doing a NoFap. And then it started to get me interested because a friend of mine and a girl was talking about NoFap and doing NoFap. So I was like, hey, do girls do this too? Can girls do this as well? And she, we were talking a bit about it. And then I thought, why should I not try it as well? Because I saw it as kind of a challenge. I really at first thought I didn't have a problem at all. So I thought, this is going to be easy. I'm just going to track the days, how long I can go without it. it it might be fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, after two weeks, like I uh, felt suddenly a huge, huge rush of energy and um, started to feel so good and so motivated. And I thought, is this because of NoFab? Because I didn't do any research uh, about NoFab before I started out. So I didn't know about the benefits and what could happen. And then because of that uh, uh, huge rush of motivation, I became super into it and I started doing research about it. I watched a bunch of videos. I read a bunch of articles and also uh, looked up uh, studies on yourbrain.com. It was a really interesting, or yourbrainonporn.com. It was, it's a really interesting website as well. 
Mm. And yeah, then that was the way I started to get into NoFab. Mm. Sure thing. It's, it's just interesting you experienced that, that surge of energy after two weeks. And that seems to be a common pattern mm. for a lot of people. And, you know, apparently that's due to the, uh, you get a t- testosterone surge. Um, so I, I don't know what the whole biological deal is uh, with women, but clearly you've experienced something which is really interesting to make that connection. It's a very common thing. Mm-hmm. So th- that's great. Now, did you experience any sexual urges um, during your NoFap journey? Oh, definitely. A lot. <laughs> mm. And and how did you deal with them in, in the moment? Did you distract yourself by doing something else or did you have something, some other method you use? Uh, yeah, mostly distracting and trying to basically transmute that energy into something else. So I would go for runs. I would just go for walks outside or just uh, go for a walk to the city center and sit in a cafe, uh, be surrounded by people. But uh, most of all, put that energy into something else productive, into creating something. And I think that was a huge part of me uh, creating more YouTube videos and being more consistent. So I could put all that extra energy into creating more videos and more content. Mm, Sure thing. Uh, Fantastic. So I've got some more questions here. Uh, Let me see here. So, did you have any concern with the fact that uh, NoFap doesn't have any solid scientific backing? Um, if I have any concern, you said. Yeah. Do you have? Any, did you have any concerns with the fact that you know, uh, you know, there is some science on NoFap, but it's not not mm-hmm. that strong because there haven't been any controlled studies. So that's you know, often there's a bit of controversy regarding that. So, did you have any concern, or did you just do it anyway? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just did it anyway, because I, I'm not so reliant on uh, studies, because I always want to try it out for myself. So if I found find something interesting, or I see it as a challenge, or I want to create my own opinion about it, I want to try it out for myself first before I need some scientific evidence uh, mm-hmm. from it. Yeah, that, that's awesome of you, Crystal. You're my kind of person. I love people who actually <laughs> dip their toe in the water before touting an opinion, they actually try it themselves. So I'm really glad mm-hmm. to see you do that and you're clearly benefiting from it. That That is fantastic. Um, so after two weeks, you said that's when you started feeling awesome and you've pursued it since. Uh, at what point did you stop counting? Oh, I think a bit, oh, I cannot, I don't remember exactly when, but uh, th- when I made that video, a bit like a week or so before that, I just stopped counting. I deleted an app from my phone that I was tracking the days on. And I think it m- might have been somewhere after 100 days or so. Mm-hmm. Okay, sure. I think it's about the same for me, actually. Uh, even I struggle to remember. I think it was around 90 or 100. I don't know what it is now. Mm. But it doesn't matter because <laughs> we've ingrained it into our lifestyles, which is awesome. Yeah. So, um, Crystal, just to, to sum up here with on the benefits side of things, what would you say are the, the top three benefits that you've derived from NoFap? Motivation is the biggest one. Because I have increased my motivation so much. There's something coming from within me that I just want to be productive, want to do things. I want to get out of bed and just start my day and get things done. So motivation is my top benefit. The second one is willpower. I've seen that also through, for example, taking the cold showers is going very easily. I started that. Uh, same period with NoFap just every time I had an urge and me deciding not to give in to that urge made me become more stronger and it made my willpower increase a lot and I think the third one is I think my hormones it helped balance my hormones more because I used to have a lot of hormonal acne and uh, yeah, I do not dare to say it is caused by, or that is the result of NOFA, but I do know that um, 
orgasm, it releases a lot of uh, chemicals and dopamine and it affects your hormone levels. Mm -hmm. And after I stopped releasing so much dopamine, (laughs) I saw a reduction in my acne on my jawline. And I think it has to do with my hormones. So I would say the third one, a balance, balancing of my hormones, definitely. Mm, yeah, fantastic, fantastic. It's it, it's quite amazing. You know, I figure it does a lot to your brain chemistry as well, simply based on the studies we do have and just a bit of common sense. I know my uh, dopamine reward system, um, based on a video by Improvement Pill over there on YouTube, uh, I can confidently say, I, for me personally, I've now experienced a massive increase in the health of my dopamine reward system which is basically responsible for your motivation it all comes down to brain chemistry and hormones so uh can definitely validate that crystal um now what else did i have here yeah i'm also curious because you're you're essentially doing hard mode where you cut off orgasm and sex and all that all together unless you do caressa method and you look more into that i'm curious as far as having a, a sexual partner goes or being in a romantic relationship have you had any issues where your partner has wanted to have sex but then couldn't because you're on no fat is there any issues there um actually uh not like when we want to engage in sex we just do it um yeah he does and do no fab so he doesn't really understand uh, everything behind it but i don't think i have any have had any issues with okay that. okay yeah mm-hmm. sure thing so so what you're saying is you actually you do engage in it when you want to but for the most part you abstain from it is that right uh yeah well yeah i think you could say it in that way yeah mhm okay sure thing uh so Moving on, I think that's I think that's just about it for the no fat questions. Uh, there is one more. So, if um, if I came to you or one of the listeners came to you and they said, "Crystal, I love what you're doing, and I want to try no fat too," and, and I've tried it, but I find it so difficult, Crystal. Uh, I find it mm-hmm. really difficult to do this no fat thing. Uh, what advice uh, would you give them to help them on their no fat journey? Mm. Yeah, start with little steps i would say take it step by step because somebody who finds it so difficult to abstain from something let's say or porn or masturbation they can maybe try out first to do to stop with porn itself and then see if they can try to stop the masturbating so it's really taking it step by step and also not going for like a huge number of abstaining for 100 days or 90 days Maybe just try out two weeks first or one week and then you can look back at it and see that you have achieved something and then you can take that good feeling towards going for more days or trying out a a bit more difficult um, challenge. So Mm. definitely taking it step by step if it's really hard for you. Don't throw yourself into a really difficult situation uh, from the beginning. Sure. Start small and build as you go. I like it, Crystal. Thanks for that. Uh, so now for some like, sort of self-development questions. Uh, I'm curious, are you a reader, Crystal? Uh, yes, I do read, but I listen more than reading. Okay, so you to listen podcast. to audiobooks or podcasts? Yeah, yeah, both. Okay, both. Sure. So do you have any audiobooks that you'd recommend? Hmm. Um, let me see. There is one book, uh, The Thank You Economy from Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, Okay, yeah. Oh, is it in regards to self-improvement? It can can actually be anything you'd like, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, then um, that one, and I also like the... Seven Habits of Effective People, mm-hmm. of or Effective or Successful, and I think right now those are the ones that are sticking to the top of my head <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, sure. No worries. Mm-hmm. And with the Thank You Economy by Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, could you explain what sort of value you got out of that book? 
Um, well, yeah, I, I, I think the, the, when I make a summary out of what I, uh, learned, is that just his way of, uh, viewing this, uh, the subject what he talked about is very different from what I, for example, learned uh, I used to do a business study and the way they explained me how to handle situations or to look at certain things is just really on the contrast of what he was explaining. So it, it made me like, uh, give me like a 180 shift in how to view things regarding to business and, um, how companies should uh, approach things, I would say. I don't know if that is a too fake answer. <laughs> That's fine, Crystal. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no worries. So my next question is, what purchase of $100 or less has most positively impacted your life in the last six months? A purchase from how much or less? So $100 or less. $100 or less. Um, let me think. Last six months. Well, I think my juicer. Oh, no, that's not. No, that's even above it. Sorry. I think other than that, I haven't bought anything very. Ex something that changed my. Hmm. No, I haven't actually bought anything <laughs> in that way. No, no. Yeah, that's fine. Although you did mm. mention a juicer, uh, even if it's over $100, yeah. I'm curious, what sort of juicer mm. do you have? I have a Try Best uh, juicer, a Try Best juicer, um, a cold press Try Best juicer. Ah, okay. What does cold press mean exactly regarding juices? Um, well, you have. Uh, other types of juicing machines and they spin and they uh, create heat while juicing uh, fruits or vegetables so that can um, they say that would destroy uh, some enzymes and don't keep the the vitamins and minerals so much intact and with a cold press juicer it can get the most out of your fruits and vegetables so it's in regard. It's like when you compare it to each other, a cold press juicer is uh, you get more out of your bucks from that. Ah, I see. Okay, I wasn't aware of that. I've just got my little NutriBullet blender, but I don't think it has any of those mechanisms. So I'll look more into that. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank, thank you for that recommendation. Um, wh what do you actually uh, put in your juicer out of interest? Ah, I uh, mostly make celery juice. Because I know that really helps um, the stomach out. And other than that, I like to juice apples with celery, with uh, lemon, and sometimes some leafy greens like spinach. But that is mostly uh, my top, my favorite juice is to just have the apples, the celery, some greens, some lemon. Oh, yeah, and ginger. Ginger I like in my juices as well. Mm, cool. Fantastic. I'll have to try out some of those. Uh, mm -hmm. Awesome. So do you have any... Uh, just a minute. Yeah. Do you have any morning rituals? Morning rituals. Yes, I do have them. Uh, the first thing I try to do when I wake up is to meditate right away. To clear my mind or not let any thoughts uh, take over my day right away. So I try to do that uh, more than 10 minutes. And then I also like to write in my journal um, the things I have experienced or things I want to just get off my chest. I write them down. I love to move also right away in the morning. Or I will just go for a walk or do some running or do some body weight exercises. And after that, I will do yoga to stretch out everything and um, yeah, make me feel balanced again and grounded. 
I also really love to drink. Oh yeah, water is actually the first thing also I do after my meditation right away. So I drink a lot of water and mostly I squeeze some lemon into it or some I put some apple cider vinegar into it because that helps your digestion uh, flow. And what else? I think those were the top things I like to do in the morning. Mm, cool. Super. Um, so we're coming close to an end here. And uh, there's, a, there's a question I want to finish off with. And that is, Crystal, do you have a, a quote you live your life by or think about often? Yeah, there was one. I hope I'm going to say it right, but it was somewhere in the lines of um, your future self is looking back at you right now. I don't think it's exactly how that quote should be, Mm -hmm. But I found it really amazing because right now in this moment, you can look back at your like back at your life at some point in your life and kind of judge it or like think about what your decision making was or like you can look back at yourself. And basically right now, uh, looking into the future, you can also think of yourself thinking back at yourself at this moment in time, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So it makes me very conscious of my decision making. So I would think about how my future self would look at me right now. Mm, interesting. All right. I love it, Crystal. That's fantastic. So... Yeah, so we've finished off a little bit earlier than expected. Uh, that's okay. That's not a good or a bad thing. Mm. That's just how it is. So, uh, Crystal, without further ado then, I just want to thank you again for coming on the podcast. I really appreciate your time and sharing with us what you have today. So thank you again, Crystal. Yes, and thank you very much, you as well. Yeah. It was really, really fun. <laughs> awesome. And just to give you an opportunity here before we go, uh, where can we find you on the internet? Um, you can find me on YouTube on Kasumi Chris. And I also have a website or a blog where I post uh, things from my personal life until also self-improvement posts. And that's also KasumiChris.com. I also have social medias where it's basically all the same name, Kasumi Chris, on Instagram, on Twitter, on Snapchat, on Tumblr. And that was basically it, where you can find me. Head to brandonnankavell.com slash subscribe. This is also the best way to interact with me and keep up with what I'm doing. Again, head to brandonnankavell.com slash subscribe. As usual, thank you for listening, my friends. I release new episodes every week. Make sure you don't miss one by subscribing. It's super easy and means a lot to me. Go to iTunes, search for The 1% Show, and click subscribe. Once again, I'm your host, Brandon Nankervell, and I'll see you in the next episode.